Let me get this straight. This is a lifestyle shoe manufactured by a running company designed by a professional tennis player. Huh. Hey, what is up everybody? It's Zach here helping you improve your tennis game gear and now apparently lifestyle with science. And today I have the Roger Center Court by On. Really interesting shoe here at the intersection of tennis, lifestyle and running. So we're gonna put these shoes through the gauntlet today, yeah, including cutting them open to see what kind of technology really is in these shoes and what kind of style was kind of put into these by Roger as well as On. Let's get right to it. You know, at first look, the Rogers kind of remind me of something you would see kind of like the old school Stan Smiths, maybe something that like Ken Rosewall or my favorite player Cliff Drysdale would have been wearing. You know, just something you would have seen at like the 1964 Wimbledon final. And you know, they kind of have that understated all white look. Now, of course, tennis shoes have evolved a ton since then. If you watch any of the reviews on this channel, you'll see that. However, I think when Roger was designing these with On, they kind of wanted to go backwards to kind of that understated style that Roger Federer has really made famous with Nike now with Uniglo. And with these shoes, you really do kind of see where you get the technology from on, but also some of the inspirations from I think Roger Federer's favorite players like Rod Laver in this shoe, which I think is so interesting, even though it is a very understated shoe. Now starting with the uppers, this is interesting when I was researching the shoe for this video, they say the uppers are made of vegan leather, which is just a fancy word of saying synthetic or fake leather, but it is all white leather that goes all the way around the shoe. There is a little bit of heel cup reinforcement here, where it says Swiss engineering, and then it does have a little Swiss flag here with the Roger. Now there are two versions of this, the center court and the advantage. Those ones do not have the gold embossing that these ones do. They're also about $50 less, but there are a bunch of different color combinations. So if you do want a little bit of a pop of color with yours, you actually can get them. Now what's interesting about the ankle collar is it is a three piece, however it's this invaginated three piece where these two pieces of the tongue actually come under this one big leather piece that kind of envelops it, which you really couldn't get away with on a tennis shoe, but it actually makes them really easy to slip on when you're trying to get them on and off just walking around, which looks pretty cool. Uh, the midsole teardown was really interesting on touts, those cloud tech they have, which are those big air pods you see on their running shoes to make them look so unique. They also tout that speed board. What the speed board is, basically just one long shank that runs from heel to toe. Now that thing compresses pretty easily when you move it, right? But it does kind of snap back to shape. And I will tell you on the teardown, these were the hardest shoes to get to cut in half. Typically, I can just do it with this just little DeWalt knife. I just cut right through them. However, on these, I actually had to go to my Dremel on the highest setting here with its cutting feature. So it was really hard to get through. So that speed board is really no joke. They say it's a liquid injected thermoplastic, which is basically polypropylene, but it really does have a ton of durable properties and it definitely does spring back. So you are gonna get a nice little launch out of it and a little bit of assist when you are running. Now, tearing this thing down on the insole, they do give you a pretty thick EVA insole here, so that does give you a little more cushion because this speed board almost, you know, when you tap it, it kind of feels like the iPhone box, which is pretty interesting. But as you can see here, all the melted plastic on there just for me cutting through it, it is really thick and it is really rigid. So if you are looking for a running shoe with a little bit more of a spring in it, the on running shoes with the speed board, you know, that technology is really something. That is not a gimmick. Now, the other cool thing about the midsole is this cloud tech or these AirPods that On has. Now, On designed these to give you a custom strike. So if you're a heel striker, midfoot striker, forefoot striker, these shoes will kind of give you the exact same energy return for however you strike. The pod that you strike on will deform and then it'll return energy along with that speed board. That speed board's giving you the cantilever and these AirPods are giving you the cushion and then that spring back, which is really cool for running when you're going straight up and down. However, side to side movement with tennis, I, I don't really see the fit there but for running, it is a really cool technology. And I have actually gone to recommending these to my patients with more forefoot issues or kind of metatarsal pain, forefoot pain. So I think those cloud pods or air pods, whatever you want to call them, they really do offer a lot of cushion for somebody that has some pain in their forefoot. So if you are looking for more of a training shoe or a running shoe, that on cloud tech, once again, is really no joke. With these shoes being so light, getting 18 centimeters on the surf test, actually pretty good considering these shoes aren't even tennis shoes. Now the outsole of the Rogers is pretty minimalist, right? It's got that speed board all the way through, so it really doesn't have a lot of room for the outsole. However, only a three millimeter tread thickness and the tread depth is just barely a millimeter. However, like I said, these are just lifestyle shoes. Kind of got that gum rubber on them. Really an old school look to the treads as well as the rest of the shoe. Now, the one thing I will say is on the rest of the outsole right here on the medial side, you do 
do just have more of that cloud tech. So this is not going to last you as long as the rest of the outsole. And the reason they're able just to put a piece of midsole here on the inside of the shoe versus more of a tennis performance shoe is that if you're just walking kind of heel to toe, unless you have an extremely flat foot and you over pronate a ton, you're just not gonna put much weight on this. Whereas on playing tennis when you're doing the splits, this would just rip right through in probably one or two sessions of playing tennis. So upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, thing ripped right through that leather, all the way down in here into the mesh layer. So that leather isn't going to stand up all that much against a lot of high impact activity, but they are lifestyle shoes. On the outsole durability test, however, with the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, only really about a millimeter, almost two millimeters of damage. So even though the tread depth is really low on these shoes on the outsole, still a ton of durability on the outsole. So the outsole should last you a long time, especially if you're only just using these for casual wear. Now you wouldn't know it to look at them, but the fit of the Ons is actually really comfortable. They actually do expand pretty well. That vegan leather does allow pretty wide foot in there. I would say if you have a really wide foot, you can go up a half size. But for a lifestyle shoe, you know, they should be pretty comfortable right when you get in them. And there really is no break in and they do expand pretty well. So I would say go true to size. If you're really wide, then go up half size. Now, even though these are built as a lifestyle shoe, I still had to play test them. They're designed by Roger Federer, so I had to hit a few balls with them. So for the first 15 minutes of my warm-up, I did play in these. Moving side to side, they really don't do anything. They're kind of garbage moving side to side on the court. But moving front to back and just split-stepping, they are fine. They're actually not the most uncomfortable tennis shoe I've ever played in. I did hit a few really good one-handed backhands in these, just really trying to channel my Federer on these. So they actually were pretty fun just to have, have a nostalgic hit with. I really wouldn't do much else with them. Maybe go take a few pictures on court with them and then take them off because, like I said, the lateral movement, there is really no flange here. So better watch out. So if I had to describe the Roger center courts in one word, it would be understated, kind of like Roger himself. You know, on the tennis court, he just lets his tennis do the talking form. It's not really bombastic. And then in his outside life, just with his regular style, you know, just kind of an understated guy. You know, I think if you went and had a beer with him and he didn't know who he was, he'd probably never tell you about all the Grand Slam titles he had. Same with this shoe. It's just a really kind of basic white leather shoe, vegan leather that is. However, all the history that's kind of packed into the shoe and kind of everything it represents, both kind of Roger Federer's idol and just kind of all the history of tennis that you can kind of see just packed into this shoe. Now, I might be overreading this, but I think, you know, when Federer goes to a company and designs a shoe that's kind of revolving around his lifestyle, I think you can bet there's going to be a lot of tennis history in that shoe. But, and you know, there's always a but, the center courts run for $189 US. That's still more than pretty much every other performance tennis shoe out there. So hopefully if Roger does continue to design shoes with on, especially lifestyle shoes, that they will start finding models that are a little bit down lower in the price point. That way everybody that wants to own a piece of Roger Federer design, Roger Federer memorabilia, zeitgeist, whatever, has an opportunity to. All right, so if you learned something today about the Rogers, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. See you next time.